the um, Stephen Burdick sermon today was, um, if you're interested, just go to YouTube, Elevation Church, um, the Elevation Church YouTube channel, and uh, they're playing it all day. I would strongly recommend you watch it. But as I was uh, listening to the sermon and ruminating on it and, and the Lord was speaking to me, um, he said, not only because um, Stephen's premise, uh, Stephen Furtick's premise was um, that you have to get through the dark part to get through the, um, to get to the good part. And the dark part is on the other side and, um, the, now the good part is on the other side of the dark part. Um, and as he was speaking so powerfully, so wonderfully, uh, the Lord was saying not only to get through to, not only to get through the dark part to the good part, but, but what is the dark part coming to teach you? I've said this many times, and I don't know why the Lord is going here again, but um, he doesn't want you to just get through the hard times or the dark part to get to good or to get to better, to get to now. Uh, no, to get to where he's taking you. But what do you have to pick up from the dark to take to your light season? What mistakes have you made that other people can learn from? He's saying, I'm not only taking you uh, to the good part from the dark part, but what is the dark part designed to teach you? He said, he said, if you look at your dark season, whatever it is, there are hidden lessons that you have to learn in order to get to your next season. There are tests that you have to pass uh, to be able to get to the next season. Um, the Lord was, the Lord said to me, uh, you've heard of the saying, what does it kill you, make you stronger? The Lord said, what, what, what doesn't kill you, teaches you. Now, what is this dark season, whatever, whether it be a season in your marriage, whether it be a season in your relationship, whether it be a season in your ministry, what are the lessons that you are to take away from this dark, part that you are in right now and no matter what it is no matter who it is there are there are trust me baby there are lessons that you have to take away and trust me you will get through this don't let the te devil tell you that you're going to die and you're not significant those are lies, because he's the father of them. A uh, Megan Trainer song says, uh, your lips are moving, because uh, you lie, lie, lie. So, he's lying to you. The devil is lying to you, because he can sense. The devil doesn't know anything. God knows everything. But he can sense that there's something in you. So that's why he's trying to stop you. So what doesn't kill you not only makes you stronger, 
But what doesn't kill you is designed to teach you. What is your pain designed to teach you? What is your pain and your process designed to teach you? It's designed to teach you something, whether whether it be to manage your money better, whether it be to be a kinder person, whether it be to be more humble. Whatever it's designed to teach you, ask the Lord when you get when you get into trouble. What is this designed to teach me? And the Lord said, also saying to me something a bit weird, but I know he's saying it. He's saying, the freak out is okay, but not forever. When calamity hits you, it's okay to freak out for a while. It's okay to have those reactions, but don't let those reactions stay or don't let them go through other people and control your life and don't make hasty decisions out of out of uh, temporary situations don't make hasty decisions in the dark part don't make life-altering, life-changing, life-destroying decisions in the dark part. Know that, baby, this won't last. This is only for now. This is only to teach you. Don't make hasty decisions in the dark part. Learn from it. Go through it. Let it teach you. But don't make life-altering decisions in this time. Take time, assess, do research with, if you're starting a business. Do whatever you need to do to prepare in the dark part so that you're ready when the light comes. And take whatever lessons you have to in the dark part. Don't waste the dark part. Don't let this all oh, be, be just trouble and I'm waiting for the triumph. No. What lessons can you take from the trouble into the triumph? From the dark part into the light? God is trying to teach you something through that job loss. And God is trying to teach us something through this pandemic. He might not have sent it, but it's working. All things are working together for our good. All things are not good, but they're working together for our good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And his purpose takes persistence and a process. So don't give up in the middle of the process. Push through, push through the pain, push through the uncertainty, push through the insecurity. And it's not a process without without pain, insecurity, frustration, and all those things. Because you need to get to that. Because you need, you need that to get to the tools of what God is trying to teach you. So what doesn't kill you, teaches you. Let it teach you. Don't fight the teaching. Don't fight the lessons. Do whatever you need to do to get to it, but let it teach you at the same time. Let it, let it minister to you. Let the dark place um, be a catalyst for light, but don't stay into the dark. Don't stay in the dark place once you get to the light. Sometimes when people get over their circumstances, 
get through their circumstances. They don't get over it. I heard, to- I heard Torin Well say that sometimes people get through it and not get over it. Remember to not only get through it, but get over it and and take the lessons uh, that it's come to teach you while you're going through it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Your word brings life and light. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. Teach us in the dark place. Teach us in the dark part. Teach us in the trouble. Teach us what you need us to know. Give us the tools of success in the dark part. He also said that the tools of success come in the dark part. He said the tools for success come in the dark part. I'll say that again. The tools for success come in the dark part. And when I say success, I mean when you follow his purpose. It doesn't mean how big or how small in our eyes. Being successful is following God's purpose for your life. God's calling on your life. Honey, you can't give up now. You can't throw in the towel now. There's so much life ahead of you. There is so much that you have to do. Forget the devil and his lies. He's a jerk and and beyond awful. Forget all that. Know that God is on your side. And after this, you will have a testimony to rival testimonies. And your dark part will will be somebody a catalyst for somebody's light part because they won't have to go through what you you're going through now because th- they will have heard you and they will take the lessons that you learned so you will save somebody else a lot of pain by going through what you're going through right now Donnie McClurkin, uh, when talking about his two molestations and all that he went through with his sexuality and all that, said uh, when he was writing the song Stand, he asked the Lord, he asked the Lord, no, he said, a friend of his said, did you ever ask God why you went through all that? And he, and he said to the Lord, well, why did you have me go through all this? Why did you have, have me to go through years of um, uh, uh, sexual confusion and two molestations and all that? And the Lord said to Donnie, uh, to Pastor McClurkin, uh, some, somebody had to go to the cross. This is your cross so that not only you can be delivered, but your generations can be delivered and and somebody else can be delivered because of your cross. Je- when Jesus went to the cross, it wasn't because he was sinful. It was because we were sinful. Sinful. And he needed to go go to the cross. And because he died and rose again, now millions and trillions of generations later, we can have life. You're going to the cross right now because uh, somebody generations down the road will hear your story and it will give them life just like Jesus in the cross. Not that you're Jesus, but it's the same principle in a lesser form. You're not going to the cross. You're not going through this for yourself, like I said many times. 
It's for your generations. It's for other people. You're going to the cross so that younger people coming behind you don't have to go to the cross. They've, they'll learn from your mistakes, from your misgivings, from your failures, from your the stuff you did wrong. And it will just be a ripple effect. So, so hang in there and keep the faith. Don't give up. Don't make lifetime decisions because of momentary, momentary uh, moments. Just hang in there. You're strong enough to make it. You can... God is carrying you. You can make it. You can go through this. You're strong enough to do that. And God didn't... God didn't take you this far to leave you. And he says to look back on where he's taken you. If he, take, if he took you from there, why would he leave you now? What the devil loves to do is give people spiritual amnesia when they when they come to a problem. They're like, oh God, why am I going through this? And they forget that God brought them through something else before. And he will bring them through again. God never changes. He's the same God. And he loves you. He loves you. This may not feel good, but in the end, it will be good. Thanks, guys. See you later. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. Just take a look. And where you are now, and where you have been, it'll always come true. Oh, you, he's the same now as then. You may not know how, and you may not know when, but he'll do it again. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you have been. He'll always come true for you. He's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. You may feel down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances that you cannot get through. Right now it seems that there's no way out and you're going under. But God's proven time and time again, He'll take care of you. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you have been. It always, it always come true for you. It's the same now as then. You may not know how and you may not know when. 
I felt it when I And he, and, and he also says, live, live, you can live, you can't die, live, you gotta live, people live, live, you can't, you can't live, you can't die, live. You gotta live, just live. You can't, you can't die here. You can't die emotionally here. You can't die spiritually here. You definitely can't die physically. I claim the spirit of suicide to be null and void, whether it be suicide physically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally, because. I sense right now there's someone that's going to be watching me that is alive physically, but you're dead emotionally, you're dead uh, spiritually, you're dead in your marriage, you're dead with your children, and some parts of our lives are thriving, are, are thriving, and some, some parts are dead. And he, he said to every part, he said, You can live, live, you gotta live. You can't die, live, you gotta live. Just live. There is life. There is life after this. That this may be a season of death, this may be a season of loss, but there is life. There is life. You can't quit now, beloved. There is life. There, there is life in your marriage. There is life with your children. There is life in your home. There is life in your finances. There is life. There is life. It's about life. You can live. Live. You gotta live. You can't die. Live. You gotta live. Just live. Thank you, Lord. Because you said you come, you, you are come, that we may have a life. And we receive your life today. We receive your strength today. We receive your joy today. Overtake our spirits. Overtake our circumstances. Overtake our lives today, Lord Jesus. Come in like a flood. Restore, heal, deliver, God. Make us new. Make us whole again. Make us yours. Y you can live. Live. You gotta live. You can't die. Live. You gotta live. Just live. You can live, live, you've got to live, you can't die, live, you've got to live, just live. Every chain that is telling you to die right now in this moment is broken, I declare it in the name of Jesus. I declare that where there is, there where there was death, life is springing up. I declare a wellspring of life is coming into your marriage, 
a wellspring of life is coming into your friendships. A wellspring of life is coming into your ministry. I declare it in Jesus' name that every dead thing is now going to live. And wellsprings are, of life are coming into your business, into your home, into your relationships, in your workplace. There is somebody right now that is dealing with drama at work. They're dealing with workplace drama. And I declare that wellsprings of life are coming in to that situation. And that situation will be different. You're praying, you're fasting about that work situation. You feel that God hasn't heard you because the situation hasn't changed. But he's saying, well springs of life are coming in to that workplace situation in the name of Jesus. That nasty boss, those nasty co-workers that don't do anything and blame you for everything are just now going, the whole situation is going to be different. Thank you, Lord. You can live, live, you gotta live. You can't die, live, you've gotta live, just live. Life is about to become real. There is someone, there is someone out there that people around you think you're living, but you know you're real, not really not. You're smiling. You're do. You're doing all the things. You're even serving in your church. You're serving online. You're serving in some capacity. But you're not really living inside you feel dead a wellspring of life is coming to you right now they're springing up and bringing forth fruit in that circumstance it's going to be beyond better it's not only going to get better, it's going to be beyond better. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. You can live, live, you've got to live. You can't die, live, you've got to live, just live. Thank you, Lord. Break every chain now, God. Every place where there was death, Lord Jesus, bring life, God. Bring life, I declare it in Jesus' name. You're bringing life to friendships. I'm seeing friendships that have been lost for 20 or 30 years, just getting wellsprings of life. I'm seeing forgiveness happening. I'm seeing just restoration happening, peace happening, or God, misunderstandings being cleared up, communication being restored in friendships, marriages, and relationships, family relationships, relationships with cousins, relationships with sisters, relationships with brothers. That person you weren't talking to, they're going to call you this week. And I declare that life will be in that relationship. I declare that even online relationships, there's somebody that is going to, was 
going through an online friendship and that fell apart because of communication and miscommunication. But I'm telling you, well, well springs of life are coming into that relationship as well. And peace is coming into that relationship. Those relationships as well. God is just healing and restoring and delivering and bringing wellsprings of life where there were where there were where there was death in the name of Jesus thank you Lord and I declare again for the last time you can live live you can live you can't die live you can live just live thank you Lord <laughs>